What's up, guys? It's your boy Cyrex. I know it's been a little while, but we're back with the free show. Of course, we got guest host Johnny Wu, KJ yo. over here. What up? Yo, 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 what's up? Y'all, this is episode 32. I know, I know, I've kept, uh, I've kept y'all waiting for over a month for, I mean, since episode 31. We touched on some good stuff there. In fact, what was that one about? Let's take a look. No. That was... Alright, so that was... that was, We had wine. That's right, we had Leanne and Andrea. We had a conversation about Trump versus Kim Jong-un. Part 3, Can't Sit With Us. And I talked a little bit about Big Crit's album which is one of the best albums of the year. I'm saying that now. One of the best albums of the year is Big Crit Forever is a Mighty Long Time. Straight up. We'll talk a little bit about uh, great albums this year, just a little later. So I wanna start the episode. First topic we wanna hit is, y'all, I mean, I've been slacking on the podcast and I apologize for that, but on the music, We've been making moves. We've been making moves out here. Uh, been going to Mystic Joint every week. Just, you know, doing my thing up there. Getting some new fans slowly but surely. And, yo, I'm telling you, we got some great stuff coming. We got some great stuff out now. Linked up with Giant Ass Kid. We got two hits in a week. We're talking about Hold Up, and we're talking about Change. I made the cover art for both, and I mean, yo, this man, Giant Ass Kid, this, 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 this man is a star. And I'm, I mean, it's a pleasure to be working with him. Shout out to you, bro. Yo, we're making some, we're making some good stuff together. We're going to make some classics together. I'm telling y'all, now, 2018 is the year. We got Christmas in a couple days. <laughs> Real soon. Yo, as of now, this is after midnight. It's Friday, December 21st. Christmas is basically four days away. Wow, how did I spell some that quickly? It wasn't a lot, though. So, I mean, I said that like I was sure, sure what I was going to say about Christmas. <laughs> Christmas going to be fun, y'all. Let's get lit. Just be safe out there. Be sure not to drive drunk. This is one of the most dangerous times of the year. On a serious note, yeah. And on Christmas, I got a new song, Progress, coming out. Now, I performed Progress a couple times earlier in the year, but didn't feel it was really right to get it out up until now. We're getting towards a, a wintry vibe. It's basically Eric Rea produced the Chill Step song that I went and flipped into it's a hip hop song about progress. <laughs> I know that's I know that sounds a little cheesy, but <laughs> progress is spelled without the vowels. It's P R G R S S all caps. And it's got it's got some grooves in it. You saw me perform it a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what'd you think of it? Yeah, it was dope. Word, appreciate you, man. You you like the bop of that shit? The fact that I mean Cause you remember that beat was a little off, it was a little out there. It's a little yeah. almost like, uh, like all them synths and all them dance vibes and shit. But I mean, we're getting it together out here, y'all. And that's coming on Christmas. That's gonna be the third song in, uh, in the month of December. And considering the fact that I did release, uh, Reckless, which is definitely getting up there in the spins. Released Reckless on Black Friday. So that means that it'll be the fourth song in a 31 day period for me. That is fucking. That's exciting. That's great. I'm really excited. And I know, the, I know you guys are gonna love this song. Just can't wait to show it to you. It's gonna be on all the major platforms just like uh, Reckless is. You know, it's gonna be on Spotify, it's gonna be on Tidal. It's gonna be on Amazon, Google Play, um, iTunes and Apple Music, and SoundCloud, all of them. 
so look out for that. Yo, by the way, I am on Pandora. I'm on Pandora, but you mean, since you can't choose what you play, you know, it's probably going to take you a good year to find me, but when you find me on Pandora, please let me know. Tweet that shit or Instagram that shit. Tag me. Please let me know. Go. For real. Like, that's going to be really exciting. And whoever lets me know, uh, you're going to get a big old shout out. Uh... Yeah, right, that's fine. Yeah, just... Yeah. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, a big topic that has been really in the air this week has been the departure of Joe Budden from Everyday Struggle. Now, for those who don't know, Everyday Struggle is a pretty big show on YouTube. I say this, I know I sound biased because I'm a fan of the show. It's got DJ Academics and Joe Budden. They basically collaborated to, rather they collaborated with Complex uh, to, to bring this together, particularly Lyric Perez and Chops, I don't know Chops' last name, um, and Nadeska Alexis mm. to put this show together, among others. Um... So basically, you know the situation now, right? I, yes, I watch it. All right. I listen to a podcast. All right. So why don't you lead us in on that? Hmm? Go ahead and lead us in. Basically, well, if I remember correctly, basically the podcast started with him introducing himself, of course, and then the podcast led into basically as to why he's basically not on the show anymore and why he didn't like the guests how they started the Fridays how they started the Friday then that's how autom it automatically showed that it's slowly pushing him out the door which people have been saying for months this is something that's been covered by thought crimes that's that been covered he by college himself Kill. showed that he saw the numbers of the podcast not the podcast of the Friday interviews that the numbers were the same as yeah, I think the only one that really compared, and again, this is me arguing. And now um, we finally know the real Joe Budden that he never wanted to fuck with anyone, any of these niggas. So said him. And he did. He did. Um, the only Friday shows. Well, here's the thing. Because I am, I was already a fan. I was led to the show because I was a fan of DJ Academics. I don't. I mean, I've mentioned he, this before. I don't agree, huh? He, he always draws good points. <coughs> he draws good points that no one else would really think of. I'll give him that. Exactly. And while I may not agree with all his opinions, even from his own content, you know, I, I mentioned, I think I mentioned in episode 31 or an earlier episode where they came up, that, I mean, the war in Chirac stuff, I never watched it because I always found it a little tasteless. Um, the, you know, I satire, I believe him at, when he says satire, but I just didn't really care for him, you know, talking about all his deaths and whatnot. Um, the King Academics channel, I don't watch much, it's like, it's Twitch stuff, I only watch like for exclusive stuff. I don't watch Twitch. Not gonna lie, I have, uh, watched a couple of his streams on Twitch, but like, those comments, they're, they're rabid, and he's like on, he's on his henny. So, um, and then Joe Budden, I mean, I've been a fan of him, I've, I've really been a fan of him since Slaughterhouse. The gag, I, yeah. Probably since the BT Awards, the Cypher. Word, yeah, that was tight. But I had their album, their first album, their you know, self-titled album. I had their second. Uh, Welcome to Our House? Yes. Yo, what, how was this shit? I never really like, got deep into it. I listened to it before. It was pretty good. It was definitely different. It was good. <coughs> Word. So, um, basically the big points that Joe goes on to explain regarding his departure are the whole thing with ownership. The whole thing with, they try to introduce, you know, hey, we want you to be, we want you to do this ad for Nike. 
or we want you to do this ad for whomever. And <laughs> title was the second one, I believe. A spot of you, Spotify. Oh, no, Spotify, there we go. That's right, and with the rap. I never knew it was music streaming. So there we go. And then some, he didn't want to. Because yeah, he wasn't going to see any of that money. And he, yeah, he didn't see any of the money. Yeah, none of, none of the three of them were going to. Because of what he mentions as a boys' club, which I mean is known in most industries, you're yeah, either boys, you're, you're either in the circle. So if you're not in the circle, you ain't getting that check too. Exactly, you're either in the circle, or you work for the circle. And, and then just like that, he wasn't in the circle. Hmm. We get it. We can talk about why. Go ahead. <laughs> we can talk about why. The why was he not in the circle? Why was he not in the circle? Why is not the why is the industry is not showing the creators more love? Why is not they're oh, helping? Oh, because they're a paycheck. But it, they're exactly they're helping them grow. If they show more support to the creators, the creator will produce more. That's how I feel. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you show more love to who's making you more money, the who's showing you who's getting you more money will get you more money. Exactly. If they're relaxed, if they're seeing the paychecks come in the money, they're going to be more, more motivated. If someone's breathing down their neck, they're going to feel more pressured. And if you do, pressure isn't always good. Some people crack. It's, it, it's more stress. Good stress is better than bad stress. That's how I Absolutely. Feel. Bad stress like puts you know, toxins in your blood. It's, extreme, it's literally extremely unhealthy. Um, I don't think it was so much press, uh, like being pressed though, as much as it was. Uh, it just didn't fuck with. Yeah, they they saw him as oh he's one of the creators he you know, he's our paycheck he's not gonna be amongst us that there's always been that that elitism too. That elitism that like you know, um, guys like Jay Z and. And Puff Daddy and uh, Rizzo were able to overcome. You know, Dr. Dre. Yeah. Some have been able to overcome with their business acumen. Um, and Joe is as absolutely approaching, but they just you know, I guess they chose they chose not to show that respect. But I mean, think about also who you know who else wasn't getting into that. I mean, he doesn't he he doesn't really. Name any names or anything like that. <coughs> but how much, how much respect was Lyric get, getting? Um, yeah. Lyric was one of the, I think she's the executive producer, or the director of the show. I don't, I don't remember. I don't quite remember. But she, she's you know she's a driving force behind the show. But she's a woman and she's a Hispanic woman too. You know, so how much respect are they giving her? Yeah. Nadeska Alexis, think about. Think about all of the all of the tweets and all of the like all the comments that people have against her, like talking about that she's a she's a problem for the show. She's a moderator, like chill the fuck out. That is the job that she has. You know, when we get to be blessed with her opinions, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But chill the fuck out with that shit. Like Remember when Russ went at her? I don't think I remember that. It was a it was a Friday episode. Mm, I already tuned into the Friday episode. I feel you. The one that was really good was K Michelle, but like Joe was with him. He eventually came on screen, mm. and he just didn't take his seat. He just like took you know he went between he went between the other two. He stood. No, no, he said he, they, I think he had a rolling chair, and he went between the desk and neck. Now, from what I saw, I haven't watched this, uh, I haven't watched too much of the footage that uh, Academics has produced since the breakup, or since the, since the, since his departure. Mm. Have you? Yeah, I think they made a new one. <coughs> a new one. Now, there were, there have been a couple new episodes this week, but that's, at least the on the record reason involved the fact that Joe just had his baby. They Joe and Sid had their baby. Up. They keep bringing that up and he doesn't like that. But I mean, they were, they were trying to do it out of respect. I think at least academics, Nadeska, and Who Kid were trying to do that out of respect. 
I can't I can't uh, imagine you know what anybody else was thinking you're doing um, but yeah there was the whole thing where it came time to renegotiate and it just wasn't looking like what he had earned you know because the whole thing with the show was oh, here's the, the whole thing with the show is it's academics and Joe Budden going back and forth mm -hmm. and producing good content and the I mean the show did you see yesterday's episode um Wednesday's episode is it Rick Ross no Wednesday was, wasn't a proper episode it was uh it was just Nadeska and she presented 10 top 10 uh everyday struggle moments yo Top 10 everyday struggle moments. I wasn't. Ugh. But let me show you something with that. So, a top 10 struggle moments, or top, everyday struggle top moments, 2017. Um, look at this. 2,188 likes, 19,290 dislikes. Subscription has gone down. At least that's what I've been hearing from a lot of videos. Believe it or not, I've watched a few videos speculating on this. Now, um, what I've seen people speculating this to be is him, you know, basically grabbing them by the balls. Saying, you know, if you want to continue, then we're going to renegotiate this and we're going to do it for, like, we're going to, you know. Yeah, but you're not into you, right? Exactly. Because I'm sure that he would like to continue. But we're going to see that what people are saying is that this is going to be, this is going to mean, like, they're, they're certain that he's, that, that Comic's going to renegotiate. They're certain that Compass is going to give him the money that he deserves, or at least some of it. Now, my understanding is that uh, they already renegotiated with academics. Yeah. And he already signed it? Um, I don't know. But in the video, he states, uh, Joe states, um, that he can get out of a bum contract. He'll, he'll do like the football owners. Yeah, it was like, I forgot how you said it. If the contract's bad, then we out. Yeah. Basically, is how they said it. So, I guess it's one of those, like, all right, so if you're not, li if you're not living up to yours, then I'm going to get the fuck out before you try to screw me. So that's, uh, I guess, the best approach that you can take it. Excuse me. I mean, I haven't really heard much that Vesca's had to say about this. Yeah, I didn't either. I know Joe Biden said that him and Axe were talking. Yeah, they're talking every day. Apparently, they talk every day. And uh, what's his name? Uh, and Academics um, confirmed that, I think, on Twitch. Because I think that's the only place where he had really an open space to do that. Probably. We gave him real, like, feedback. Yeah. Um, now, I didn't watch it because it's like over an hour, and I'm not going to do that. Well, actually, I might if I decide to, but Academics Twitch, that's over an hour? We'll see. Probably not. Uh, he did all the, he did like a six minute video. Yeah. And it seems like, I mean, what do you think is going to happen with Everyday Struggle? Um, I don't think he's going to come back. You don't think Joe's going to come back? No. So you think they'll continue, like, without? Yeah. They're going to find someone else. And it's not going to be the same. They're going to try, and Joe's already said, I don't think he's going to go back. So, 
if he's made up his mind, then I don't know. I can't. This is mine. This is opinion. So, so imagine that in an everyday struggle, only months after this the show the show began, a new everyday struggle with a new cast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Basically, what we're envisioning is um, the Deska as moderator still with academics as host and probably somebody else who they're going to probably introduce as co-host but then later bump them up to host because I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, the credits of earlier episodes mm-hmm. Joe Budden was listed as host and academics as co-host and that later changed to them both being uh, listed as host so maybe they'll do the same thing now, who could you see them bring it on? Yeah, that's uh, that's the weird part. I don't know. I don't think they'd keep Who Kid permanently. Yeah, exactly. I don't no. think they, I don't think there's enough. Uh, also, Who Kid's gonna probably be in uh, you know, on Eminem's tour. Exactly. Or you know, he has another job somewhere. Yeah. So. That would be freaky though. Like think like they would have to probably they would probably have to bring in an old head, or at least somebody you know if they were gonna bring in somebody around academics age, it has to be somebody with the same mentality, or not the same mentality, but somebody with more of a mentality, like more of an old school oriented mentality. Yeah, an opposite figure. Yeah, it has to be like a Joey badass. Or somebody who somebody who's more into Joey Badass, or somebody who's more into like Earl Sweatshirt, people like that. Yeah. We can't have like a num- another mumble rap guy. Exactly. We have someone to. Cause act like it or not, he's the mumble rap guy. See the opposite side, yeah. And meanwhile, Joe Budden, we I'm hearing that he's got something brewing with Charlemagne the God. Yeah, they've been talking. Maybe. See if I can find any info on that. Charlemagne and Joe Budden. What have you heard about that? Just that they've been texting like every day and talking that he's saying that was the right move. I mean, he definitely he moved with integrity. He absolutely moved with integrity. Okay, so it looks like Revolt is doing a little, a little show. 2017, or this year was Dope slash Trash with Charlemagne and Joe. So. Oh, wow. That, that's, that would be interesting. So categories... Will include top five albums, top five lyricists, top five hottest artists, trash rappers, tragedies. He got some I was South Carolina shit like him. Okay. And it's gonna air on it's gonna air on, on Tuesday, the day after Christmas. Oh really? First day of Kwanzaa. On Revolt. So I got me a little, you know, a little direct TV now. So I'm gonna have that. Um, but yeah, I was just honestly surprised. Like going back to going back to the topic of everyday struggle, I was just I was surprised. I was like, okay, he had the baby. It makes sense for him to to be taking a, a you know a week yeah. off, a week, two weeks off. But then I heard that I was just like, what? Are you kidding me? But. I mean, think about all the things that they were facing in the few, in the first few months. People are talking about, oh, uh, academics is ruining his brand by you know fucking with complex because he basically draws their whole audience. Yeah, because he makes as much as an audience as they do. He does, yeah. And then you know Joe Budden, uh, you know having all his shit going on on his own. So I mean, it's just. <coughs> It's just surprising that they would do that to base what's basically their cash cow. Yeah. You know, I mean, it would just it it would. I mean, I know it, 
the execs always want to keep as much of the money for themselves as they can. But it's just like, you're going to make that money back. Yeah, exactly. They're going to make that money that they invest in Joe yeah, back. Yeah, more. Exactly, into more. But, I mean, it just goes to show you, even business people want that now money. Mm. You know, think about what Atlantic Records has done by, you know, signing, signing Cash Me Outside, girl. Bad Barbie. Mm-hmm. Or whatever she is. Uh, you know, all the all the YouTube stars that are getting signed, and they're getting they're getting people to write for them. Is in Kodak Black signed by? Is Kodak Black signed by Atlantic? He might be. Yep. Dollars and Deals, Sniper Gang, and Atlantic. Ain't that something? And yeah, he been fucking with her. He been legitimizing her. No, oh, yeah, he did. They, they had a little some pictures and shit. No, and they were dropping a song together. I really hope that's not the case, but probably saving it for later if he hasn't dropped already. See the th- <laughs> all the shit, all the shit with his antics and like. Him, you know, him just the shit he does. Yeah. He drops a lot of pictures on Instagram. It's just... It's I don't know if you follow him or not. Oh, I don't. No, I don't. I like a few of his songs, and I think he's good. It's just... Just his behavior is just gonna get him the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. You know? And, um, I mean, he's... He's how old? He's 20. You know? So he, he I think he deserves at least a fair shot. But he just he just keeps oh, he keeps doing the shit. I twenty five. Give him some twenty five. Maybe. We'll see. Cause I mean, think about the transformations that musicians make. Exactly. No, so I give him some twenty five. I feel like there's just a phase. Maybe. Uh. So. I did actually want to talk about transformations too. I don't know if I touched on this in the previous episode, but I, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it again if I have. Think about like what was going on with Chance the Rapper back in 2012, 2013. When did you first hear about Chance the Rapper? Probably his first song. <clears throat> was it a mixing? Which one? Was it Acid Rap? Acid Rap was not the first mixtape. Mm-hmm. That was the breakthrough mixtape, though, absolutely. Yes, okay. If we're talking breakthrough, then that's the first one I heard. Um, what was I going to say? So it was released on April 30th, 2013. Now, I had heard Chance before that. I had heard of him before on... Uh, 2010? No. No, uh, 2012. I actually heard of him because of... What was it? Royalty, that's the one. He appeared on track 12, They Don't Like Me. Like, um... Did you ever listen to Royalty? No. Oh, that was that one where... He had uh, Unnecessary with Schoolboy Q and Absol. He had uh, Who Shoulda Known Was Hot. Yo, he worked with like everybody on this. And then just didn't do it again. <laughs> but this was the one between camp and Because the Internet came out. Oh, on July 4th, 2012. That's right, I remember. So I got that shit right when it came out. So, I heard him on that song. He he basically did most of the song. Did he? He did. He did most of the song, really. He had the long verse, whereas Gambino really had four four bars at the at the beginning and then eight at the end. Okay. So I guess he those were just him given, you know, given chance to, a chance to shine, <laughs> chance to shine. And he took him on tour. Like oh, remember, yeah, he did. uh. Nightly Searches for Our Bed, and I just came off tour with Troy. 
Because Troy, I mean, Gambino was Troy in Community. Um, so, yeah, that's what, you know, that's what he says in Good Ass Intro. So, yeah, I was listening to this, like, basically when it came out. Okay. And it, it got, like, rave reviews. Like, like what, was your, what was your shit on this tape? I that? Yeah. Run the list again. We have Good Ass Intro. Push a man slash paranoia. Cocoa butter kisses. Yes. Juice. Yes. Lost. That was the, that was when I first heard No Name. My druggy hug me when I'm ugly. Yo, that yes. was my shit. Yo, No Name's become one of my favorite artists since then. Uh, everybody's something. Everybody, somebody's everything. Yeah. Uh, interlude where it's like that's love nah favorite song with Childish Gambino yeah that was hot uh nah nah with uh Action Bronson nah 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 Smoke Again with Absol that was my shit too yeah uh Acid Rain I liked a little less Chain Smoker was cool Chain Smoker was good Everyday Everything's Good Good ass outro. The everything's good. No 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 no. The last one was it? Yeah, I mean he blew up off this mixtape. It was self released and everything. Now I mean you know all those things that they've been saying about like him being an industry plant that might have helped you know his uh yeah. his dad being in government. Um, I mean remember what everybody expected after that. What everybody wanted, rather, after that. And then they, he came with, uh, with Surf. And with the, you know what, you know, like, what, what was Surf's downfall? What? Surf's downfall, really? It was, because remember, it was, it was Donnie Trump and the social experiment. It was the fact that, uh, the fact that they, they even said, this isn't a chance album. And Chance isn't even gonna rap on every track, but people still wanted the Chance album. Yeah, that's absolutely what they wanted. Hold up, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick that topic up uh, at another point. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm probably gonna end up restating the things that I said in this episode uh, about this topic, so don't worry about it. But um, let's take a a little detour. Now, here's one of the last major topics, or major headlines anyway, that was touched on the show. On Everyday really Struggle, that is. And uh, I've been meaning to get back at you guys with this topic, too. Because this is something that I did feel very seriously about. And I did make profuse comments about it in the, uh, you know, what's it called? On Reddit. Yeah, that's right, guys. I'm on Reddit. Um, so let's take a look. Basically, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, Mr. Post Baloney and his comments about hip hop, particularly, uh, you know, and I'll be straight up, particularly, uh, the, what is it? The mainstream in this in this uh, era. All right, so let's see here. Wow, I left a lot of comments. Goodness, all right. So I'll just take it from the top for those who don't know. Mr. Post Baloney was interviewed by a Polish magazine, and uh, he was he was apparently given various beers to try. All right, so let's. 
let's go, let me find the quotes. Let me really find this stuff so, so that, so that I make no mistake. So that I make absolutely no mistake. So this man said, if you're looking to cry, if you're looking to think about life, don't listen to hip hop. There's great hip hop songs where they talk about life and they really spit that real shit. But right now, you know, there's not a lot of people talking about shit. Whenever I want to cry, whenever I want to sit down and have a nice cry, I'll listen to some like Bob Dylan. Now, um, this was for new ones. This was for new ones, and and he barely drank any of the beers. Now he tried to cover all this. What's up? He tried to cover a lot of this nonsense by talking about the fact that he had drank a lot of the beers, so what he was saying was going to be misinterpreted. It was denied that he drank all those beers. In fact, it was stated by the source, by the people, by new ones who, who interviewed him, that he barely had any of the beers. Uh, I'm a little out there though. I did have a couple of beers, or I'm having, I'm on my second one. But then, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little peed. But, that's what happened. Now, first thing I want to tackle. First thing that I want to tackle. I want to tackle just that quote piece by piece, and I know I'm late. I know. This basically happened the day that. Uh, Reckless came out. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, no, it happened before that. It happened before that. Let me see if they have a date that it did happen, because it did happen last month. Seemed to have happened before. Oh, on the twentieth. It was pre- that's what it was uh, published. So this is mo- most likely the week, bef- the week right before Thanksgiving. No, you can hold that. I'm not gonna watch that. Cut the quote. No, let's talk about that. If you're looking to cry, if you're looking to think about life, don't listen to hip hop. Really? Really, bro? There's great hip-hop songs where they talk about life and spit that real shit, but right now, you know, there's not a lot of people talking about shit. Right now, there's not a lot of people talking about shit. So, he basically says, right now, in this current era of hip-hop, where artists are currently releasing music, young or old, currently releasing music in the 20 teens because that's what that's I'll, I'll even let him have the 20 teens there's not a lot of people talking about shit well it seems that way when you know the are the, the radio plays the same six artists all the you know all damn day they pick six artists or whatever for whatever demographic and play that shit all motherfucking day then yeah it's gonna look like that but you're a musician you're a musician. How would you, you know, how would you be so uneducated? Like, how would you be so uneducated on the current climate of music and be number one on the on the Billboard charts? To even crack the Billboard charts, you need to be aware of current music in your damn demographic. Aware. You don't have to listen to it, but you need to be aware of it. You need to be aware of it. Now, this was challenged... This was challenged by Vince Staples saying, uh, mentioning the Futures verse on 3500 by Travis Scott. That also features, uh, I think, Quavo? 
No, no, I'm wrong. Future and goodness. I was surging 3,500 just like year. No song. Two chains, two chains. I don't know why I thought it was Quavo. My bad to both you guys. Um, Travis Scott featuring Future and Two Chains. Now, I'll be honest. I only listened to the song probably once or twice. It's seven minutes and forty one seconds. You can hold that. I don't like Travis Scott's music as it is. So you know, I was given Rodeo a thorough chance, but I, I hated it. But whatever. Just wasn't for me. Um, so I'm gonna. I'll, I can just take that. I can just accept that. Future, future verse made somebody cry. No. I mean, future has has sold some shit. You know. I'm sure he's been in a lot of situations. Been in a lot of serious situations. You know, everybody has. So. That's two years ago. If I'm giving you the 20 teens, that one song already invalidates your point. But, for the sake of an argument, let's just keep on going. Let's keep on going. Now, one of my favorite albums, because I did mention No Name just a few minutes ago. One of my favorite albums ever is Telephone by No Name. I think that she comes through with some amazing stuff. That is a 10 minute album, 10 minute, 10 track album. That's a 10 track album. Or mixtape, whatever you want to call it. 33 minutes. And she is coming through with some of the best stuff ever. So. Diddy Bop. Now, I mentioned, um, I mentioned her, I mentioned this mixtape on episode three, and I'll be sure to link episode three, because I go in for a little while about it. Mind you, this is when, this is back when episodes were a little shorter. It's a 25 minute episode, so it's a, it will be a little easier to digest, you know, once you, once you get through this. You know, once you get through, uh, once you get through this episode, 32, <laughs> stay here, then go back. Thank you. Much appreciated. You're the best. So, um, Diddy Bob, I, when I sing that hook, I can't, I, I always end up fighting back tears. This I like growing on my clothes. Stops in my pockets, you be my big my hoops, no. You know what I think part of it was, too, is y'all need to go on what y'all need to go on um, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you need to go so that you can listen to Diddy Bop by, by no name. It features uh, Rory and it also features Cam Obi. Uh, Cam Obi from he used to be in Justice League. I don't know how that situation is going at this moment, but I know that uh, you know he did a couple he did a couple beats for Chance, and I mentioned that in an earlier episode two. Not episode two, but uh, oh, it's episode twelve. Wow. Yeah. Or I may have. I don't know. So, anyway, that was, you know, he did a couple, he did a couple beats for Acid Rap, and he was credited as Cam of Justice League at the time, and I was surprised by what he was making, because it's like, this is Cam of Justice League? He's in Justice League? You know, not to, not to ever uh, discredit Justice League, you know, uh, whatever it is that's going on with them that's going uh, on with their you know with them versus Cam OB uh, 
let's see what I have to do to get there with ease. Here we go. So they're a group of hip-hop producers. And let's go through some of their credits. Uh, all right, so... They did She Got It by Two Pistols featuring uh, T-Pain. That's She Got It, whatever it is, bitch. Y'all remember when T-Pain was hot? T-Pain was that nigga. T-Pain was the hook guy. They produced Maybach Music, Rick Ross featuring Jay-Z. Remember Maybach Music Part 1, that is. Uh, a few tracks off Deeper Than Rap, including Maybach Music 2, this time featuring T-Pain, Lil Wayne, and Kanye West. They did Aston Martin music. That's the big one. That's the big one that I remember. Love that one. And I Don't Deserve You by Lloyd Banks. Yes. Those two are tight. Especially Aston Martin music. That was huge. It's an absolutely huge single. Um, let's see. They also, uh, oh wow, they did me my music four. Did they do uh, three? Oh, three me on. Oh, they did. Wow, they did all the Maybach musics. Look at that. That's pretty cool. But anyway, I strayed. Basically, that uh, song Diddy Bop brings tears to my eyes just about every time I hear it. Um. His Pain, BJ the Chicago Kid featuring Kendrick Lamar. <sighs> Gets me every time. Well, I mean, I don't always tear up, but, you know, it brings, uh, brings upon those type of feelings. Um, there was this one song that Louie and I heard a few years back that, like, it was about this dude who he was a, he was a recovering heroin addict, and he, he relapsed. Then he got his friend to relapse, and his friend died. And, you know, he felt terrible about that, obviously. Because, you know, that, I mean, that was something else. Um, Radio Silence. No, that's not, the, that's, not the song, that's not the song it's called, but that's the album by Talib Kweli. And the song is called All of Us, features, um, features Jay Electronica, and who else is, does it feature? It's Yummy Bingham on the hook, and that, that hook brings tears to my eyes every time I sing along. That's just tight. All of us, all of us. Yo, go listen to that. Go listen to that Radio Silence album by Talib. That's one of the tight albums of this year. Kidding me? Um, so, uh, I mean, I just named a couple that make, that, that bring tears to my eyes. So, and I mean, he backtracked on that, the whole, who am I to listen to, but what a cop out that was. It's obvious, who are you to tell me what to listen to, but to especially what you what you told to your audience and what you told to the global hip hop audience what you told to a, a publication in a nation of people who may know or they're I mean it is highly unlikely that Polish people are more informed on hip hop than Americans it's highly unlikely and we're talking about the average Polish person versus the average uh, American now Put that uh, average uh, Canadian, not Canadian, why did I say Canadian? Average Polish hip hop fan or artist versus average American hip hop fan or artist, where hip hop began, you know? So, just, and people have brought that up, think, you know, think about that. You told this to a crowd of people who don't even know hip hop like that, and you're feeding into that stereotype. You know, so those people who they heard you say that, 
may not necessarily go see your um, your little backtrack crap. So you, I mean, and I know this is kind of a this is this is kind of this kind of implies that the people who read that are weak minded, but when you tell somebody when somebody already thinks something and you tell them something that reassures that they're highly unlikely to just go back and you know do enough research knowing that it might change their opinion when people know that something might change their opinion they're often resist they often resist it when people know that something like when you know that going and doing something, going and reading something, going and seeing something might change your perspective, might give you too much information for you to justify what you currently do. You know, then you 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 want to resist. You don't want to dive into that because then you got to look at yourself like, well, fuck, now I have to change. We don't want to change. We accept change reluctantly, but we don't really want to make big structural changes like that to our lives as a whole, you know? So, think about what you did to that audience that heard that, that was set in their ways, or not even set in their ways, but just they already may have thought something like that, and, you know, there that went, right? Think about the fact that you just sold out your the entire genre that you're now claiming. Because think about the fact that this person spent all like the, the early part of their career, actually a lot of their career, a lot of their mainstream career anyway, because the song White Iverson was really what propelled him into the mainstream. Now I always saw I always thought that's this song was stupid. Since the day it came out, since, rather since the day I heard it, it was like probably good for because that was twenty fifteen and twenty fifteen. I wasn't you know I wasn't doing anything good except uh, working at McDonald's and you know going to parties with you know uh, basically going and partying uh, under the pretext or. Basically, it was vapid partying. It was vapid partying. I was just going there, having having some drinks, you know, puffing a little bit, and just trying to enjoy myself. Maybe get, you know, maybe get a girl. That's what I was trying to do back then. So... Just you can think about think about the 2015 environment, because I think I was much more of I think that was the really the last year that I was much more of a fan than I was an actual artist. You can mark that now. 2015 is the last year that I start that I that I use spend so much time so much more time being a fan than an artist. something but just from the jump because I'm straying I'm talking I ended up talking about myself from the jump it's been a whole we're not really trying to claim the title hip hop right now we're trying to you know also be doing country we're going more in a rock and pop and country direction So this person basically decided to come in, to to walk in to pop music, walk into what became pop, what's essentially pop music now, because rap has essentially become hip hop and R and B are, are essentially the new pop, as we've discussed in previous episodes, as just about everybody has discussed. Hip hop and R and B are the new pop, and uh, this has been going on for a couple years now, really. So, who came in, who waltzed in, and wanted to do, wanted to make the pop music that would allow him to go any in any direction? This little motherfucker, Post Baloney, stepped in with freaking cornrows and gold teeth and all this 
like all this basically he stopped short of actual blackface he came in to appropriate things that were that have been have always been associated with black culture and hip hop culture too uh so he adopted the black the a uh, black enough image as he you know as he interpreted that and he the mainstream black image you know the mainstream rapper image what is it that people who don't know anything about hip hop and they see it as moral decay you know those people they think that hip hop artists that that's how they think hip hop artists dress and act that's how hip hop that's how they think hip hop people dress and act and even to this day you know our people they still want to be um I'm I'm not a rapper I'm an artist because we've allowed them we have allowed them to continue we have allowed people outside of hip hop culture to continue to make rapper a negative label to continue to make rapper uh something negative something bad something you know uh what is it like passe or something you know and that's always that's always frustrated me let me verify the meaning of passe Okay, not per se, uh, passe. But basically, it's supposed to be something that's just. <sighs> you understand what it is like, and for even people who are authorities in the culture, to even allow no to lo- to low key allow that. How many people say, you know, you're more than a rapper? Yeah, but I mean. You, they say that in uh, looking down on being, on calling it being and calling yourself a rapper, kind of way. Now I don't, I don't think everybody does this. You know, I'm not reach, I'm not trying to reach here. I'm just saying for anybody who does, that is a thing. That is a that is a perspective. Uh, that is a prevailing perspective. That, you know, that saying you're a rapper, and that's even been a thing of hip hop the whole hip hop versus rap debate and the whole MC versus rapper debate you know so even i've fallen into that in the past i've tried to get a whole, get away with the whole bs about you know uh well, no that's not true i never actually tried to outright say i'm not a rapper in favor of being an MC i've always said i'm a rapper but i'm an MC so i mean not to be not to not to try to look holier than thou but I mean if you rap and that's what you do that's what you do then own it make rapper more positive that's what I'm doing I'm gonna show y'all that being a, being a rapper is dope being a rapper is fucking it's something that's to be respected cause you know Rappers are songwriters. Rappers are expected to be the ones writing the songs. And these are the songs that, you know, not to be cliche, but make the world go round. Especially in the 20 teens. Especially when hip hop is pop. Hip hop is the new pop. It's not the synth pop anymore. It's not the, you know, it's not pop rock and, well, rather, it's not rock anymore. So pop rock is something different now. Pop rock, they they say it's indie rock. They say it's alternative rock. And they've said they've been saying that for years. I haven't heard the word pop rock actually used to describe uh, you know, a modern rock group. You know, so that term I guess maybe it's phased out. I don't know. Um but Basically, I mean, and every this is, seems to be the resounding, or rather, the uh, the prevailing opinion, is that, you know, had this person come into music, ten, fifteen years ago, they would have been doing rock. 
We thought it would, like they, he was he would come in with the, with the same guitar, you know all that stuff. I haven't even heard him rap. I don't even know if he's an actual rapper because I've yet to hear him rap. Oh, he oh, he's always doing the sing songy stuff, the crooning, the you know that kind of stuff. And I oh my goodness, I don't like any of it. Well, you know, there, there's, there's a couple, you know, songs off of Stony that I can tolerate. You know, shout out to my girl, my baby Elsie. Oh, uh, what's up, girl? <laughs> For a little, what's up, babe? Um, you know, even she tells me to listen to that album with, uh, you know, listen to that album through, uh, a pop and rock standpoint. I still haven't done it. I, I don't know if I will. No. I'm not interested in it. No, there's stuff that... Eh, just no. Just probably not. We'll see. It's 50 minutes. Yeah. It's 14 songs. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Especially since... And here's the, here's the big kicker of all of this. He's talking all this shit about... You know, people aren't talking about a whole lot of shit. Neither is he. He's like the... When he's talking about that, he's talking directly about his own music. I've only ever known his music to be extremely vapid. You know. Let's look at a couple of lyrics from... From the current one. Let's take a look. I've been fucking hoes and popping pillies. Man, I feel just like... Yo. Yet, uh... You know, not a lot of people are talking about shit. Like, are you serious? And I mean, there has to be like this is some this is some kind of irony. This is some serious kind of irony, where that is this is the some of the most vapid shit that I've ever heard in my life. And the same person who made it is seriously wanting to talk crap about the current state of music and what they talk about. That you, you be, look, you can make whatever the fuck you want, but you lose the right to speak on certain things if you're part of the problem. I don't know what makes him think that his music is like, like he's talking about anything. He just wanted to come in here. He straight up appropriated hip hop and y'all let him. Y'all let him. Are you serious? Y'all fucking let him. So all the people who let him in, don't don't be mad because this is what you wanted. You wanted to be your own, let him do whatever you want. No, no. You can make what you want, but when you're in something, when you're in a field, you know, you need to, you need to have, first of all, have some respect for what came before you. Have some respect for what the culture is. You know? And I know that people might say this is a long shot type thing, but they don't just let you be a doctor. You gotta go through all these rigorous years of education you know, you got you got to learn you got to learn a fuck ton of stuff. You have to get certifications. You have to earn earn diplomas, more than one diploma, to be able to be a doctor. And if they were to let you be a doctor without any of that stuff, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna be you're gonna be directly responsible for a lot of people's deaths. You're gonna be directly responsible for a lot of people's illnesses, or I mean, illnesses worsening. You know, if if they just let you be lawyer, if they just let you be a lawyer because you had an opinion about law, because you 
you know, because you got somebody off on, uh, you know, in mock trial in middle school. If they just took that credential and that was it, and they were just like, oh, let's just see what you can do. Most of your clients would lose their cases. Especially criminal cases. That would be a serious thing. Might fuck you up on the way out. And then really, then go to jail for life, for real. Like, I'm just saying. And again, I know that it is a bit of a long shot parallel. But we, they, it's been shown time and again that people who don't know shit about hip-hop and try to come in to do hip-hop, they're phased out real quick. They're a fad. Iggy Azalea didn't know... The, Iggy Azalea does clearly, you know... Despite her citing Tupac as, as an influence on her, didn't know anywhere near enough about hip-hop as she needed to to come in and be respectful of the genre and really earn her place at the table. You know, like... I'm not saying that... I'm not saying that people shouldn't be given a chance... But this nigga's been given the chance. This nigga's been given chances. If we give you, if if the culture gives you chances, and you're just putting your foot in your mouth every single time, you need to fuck off. You're not bringing anything positive to the table. You're just making yourself and us look like a bunch of buffoons. You need to fuck right off. So, despite all these backtracking statements talking about I I make hip hop. I don't hate hip hop, I make hip hop. I nigga. Just. Show us what that means to you. I don't think that's an unfair thing. I think that any. There should be one rule in all forms of art. In all forms of art, there should be one rule. Make what the fuck you want. But. You need to understand that what you're making is art and it's going to be more than just you it's going to be more than just what you thought it was even if it's only a tiny bit more once you put it out there it's something to be perceived it's something to be observed something to be looked at something to be absorbed you know it's yours but it's not just the, it's not just yours anymore and it's going to be there it's going to be in the world. It's going to be in the cloud, so to speak, on the internet, especially. Long after you're dead. So, you should have some respect for that. You need to have some respect for the fact that what you create will remain on this, in this world, on this plane of existence, long after you have died. And what you create, that is your legacy. You know, whether you like it or not. Some people might sweep what you, you know, some shit you do under the rug. Sure. I don't really hear a lot of people talking about uh, Juan and Sophie. I don't hear people talking about uh, in my lifetime or I can't get with that. I don't really hear people talking about... um, at this point, not really best of both worlds. But we still talk about Jay like he's a king, because he is. But he still made that. He still made all that stuff. Uh, 20 bags shorty. We don't talk about that. Huh? Huh? We don't talk about that. Uh... Sure, like Gary Vee says, we only only remember the wins. Yeah, but... Look, I just... You can't come into a culture and profit off of it and then shit on it every turn. Every turn. You know? Can't tell a magazine, hey, we don't want to be on your list because we're not going in this direction right now. And then be confused as to why you weren't considered for the list the next time around or something so whatever that situation was I don't really even care to go look further into that that was just plain stupidity 
that's just plain narcissism. I don't. I, just, I don't and like. Look, I understand that what's in the what's on the pot, what's on the radio, what people want to listen to just for escape, and just to you know fantasize themselves and you know on a bigger plane and whatever that whatever the fuck. Sure, yeah, a lot of that music is not talking about shit, but a lot of that music's what you're making, so that takes away your right to basically even have an opinion on that you know because what are you it, what are you ultimately going to do about that on an album called beer bongs and bentley's beer bongs and bentley's what do you think that uh, what are we what are we supposed to think that album's going to be about is it going to be about st- is it going to make us cry probably going to make us cry how how this is considered hip hop? Sure. Yeah, I know. I, I I took the I I I pulled out of that one. Oh my goodness! Just I just don't understand how somebody can how somebody can be just uh, uh never mind. Just never mind. I, I aired out everything that I wanted to on that one. He did go back and backtrack. Let me let's go let's just go ahead and talk about what he said. Just just to gloss over just to apparently there's a lot of people saying I don't appreciate hip hop or that hip hop's never made me feel anything. I'm referencing that interview that I did in Poland when I was in the European tour. Beer chasing interview, they put a lot of beer in my face. Although they uh you know Apparently, I said, whenever you want to feel something, don't listen to hip hop. Oh my goodness! You weren't even addressing what you said. You copped out of it by saying, "You you copped out of it." I'm trying to flip it on the reader, or the listener, and saying, "Oh, like so, like trying to blame them for reacting to what you said." No, you straight up disrespected the genre and the culture that makes you money that made that makes you able to feed your family. Uh, and I mean oh, so apparently the point of that was to bring up his own personal taste when that music gets emotional I mean here's another thing that's been touched on a lot of Bob Dylan's music isn't contemporary is it? What 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 Bob Dylan are we are we talking about? Because apparently he does have an album from this very year, as well as, wow, he's dropped albums three years in a row, then another um one back in twenty twelve oh not two in oh nine, oh one's a Christmas album. Lots of albums, thirty eight albums. All right. Now, what are we talking about? What what? album are we talking about? What era are we talking about? What songs are we talking about? I don't know any Bob Dylan, so... You know, this is some... This is something to really think about. The reluctant voice of a generation for the 60s. It was 19 to 29 in the 60s, so... You know, I think that's uh, something really cool. So, are we even talking about contemporary Bob Dylan? Because if we're not, then you're juxtaposing pop music of this era with Bob Dylan music of another era. And it already hollows out your point entirely. Not that it had any ground left to stand on as it was. But, let's keep, let's continue. A lot of people say I don't appreciate hip hop. My last album was hip is hip hop. My next album is hip hop. I love hip hop. I make hip hop. All right, if you say so, far be it from me to just straight up tell you you're not hip hop. I know you. I know you're not a rapper. I know you don't rap. 
But far be it for me to tell you that the music you make isn't hip hop, especially when you use all those trap style, all those 808 beats. The production you use absolutely is hip hop. I want to take this genre, excuse me, I want to take this genre and stretch it so far that people who may not listen to it, listen to it. That's what a lot of people want to do. And want to listen to the new artists and whatever's going on. See, when somebody like you says that, regardless of what you actually mean, it's going to come off, especially people already see it as a culture vulture. So, I'm just going to straight up tell you, even with respect to the fact that most people would like, you know, most people who do want to stretch a genre would definitely like people who may not listen to it to listen to it. And to take, you know, for that to possibly take them down a rabbit hole of other hip hop to listen to. That'd be awesome. That's, you know, the idea of what most uh, game changing, you know, what most, what most people, most status quo changing musicians are. That's what they want. For, their, for the genre or genres they work in. But when it comes from an artist like you, who undeniably has appropriated the image, who most people would say, or many people, you know, there's a prevailing opinion that you appropriate the music and the culture. So you saying something like that is gonna come off like, I wanna pander as much as I can to the white people who would never listen to hip hop I want them to, to make me the face of the hip hop they listen to. That's what it comes off like. That's inevitably what it comes off like. And far be it for me to assume that it could, that it wouldn't be that. You know? But anyway, that's really all I have to say on that. Um, probably, I'm going to try to not talk about, <clears throat> I think, since I got it all done, I don't think I want to talk about that again. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter at this point. Oh, and I especially don't want to see that video, and I haven't been to a club in a while, so luckily I haven't really had to hear that song. Every time it comes on in the car, I change that shit. Babe, you know I changed that shit. You know, or rather I ask you to change that shit. I look at you in a way that you change it. <laughs> Which I appreciate. This is not made to imply that I look at her and make her change it, but she knows I just really, 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 really don't want to hear it. Dorash. Last thing I want to talk about tonight is um so what i i guess what fell by the wayside for me dj academics and Deezus and mero seem to have gotten into some kind of a uh, little dispute a little you know negative negative energy floating around Uh, now, I don't know what they said. I don't know what they may have said, like, last week or anything like that. I, you know, and I've fallen behind, on honestly, this week. I only just saw, you know, because I haven't, I still haven't, like I mentioned earlier in this episode, I haven't watched DJ Academics going into, you know, that hour-long conversation or the hour-long stream regarding Joe's departure. I might, you know, watch that after this. But, uh, you know, apparently he, he took a shot at Deezus Zamero because they like did embroil themselves just a tiny bit on, uh, in, uh, that, in that stuff. And that stuff with, um, what's it called? And that stuff with Vic Mensa and Academics. You know, where they had brought it, they had, uh, he basically got into his, uh, you know, they, they talked about, they kind of clowned him during the Miko situation that took place, I think it took place after. I don't quite remember. 
I just can't remember. But yeah, uh, they clowned him for that. They also clowned him with the whole Vic Mensa situation when he went on the sh- when he went on their show on Viceland. Which, if you have if you guys haven't seen that, you guys need to go see it. Number one show on late night. Um, so you just made me a little distraught, you know, a little like eh, whatever. Uh, when, you know, when it came out or when I saw that there was neg- negative energy going on between them. Because I'm a fan of Deezus and Mero, and I'm a fan of academics. Now, uh, what basically, you know, what, what was exchanged during, he said something about how, you know, he doesn't want to, he does he never like called them out or anything. But every time that, Every time that they bring him up, it's always negative energy. Uh, Prego's here to help co-host the next segments or this last segment. So every time he bring, every time they bring him up, it's some negative energy attached. And I mean, I I don't think that's false. You know, with the whole fuck DJ academics thing, that that was Vic Mensa's rainbow for the episode. Uh, kind of just as easily been autobiography coming out this day, this day, this day, cop it. But whatever. And uh, then the whole thing with... Yeah, like I said, the whole thing with... Uh, what's it called? I think Wale went on their show, or they covered the Wale thing too. And Wale made it mad corny toward them. Like, I, I didn't like that at all. The whole look here, you was a loser in high school, and I was a cool guy, but I was also that cool guy that wrote short stories and shit like that. Like, oh, yo, way to fucking, way to fucking stroke your ego till you come, dude. Like, uh, I thought that was whack. But they, I think they did talk about that too. And so they addressed it on the Wednesday episode. And he said, you know, y'all ain't busting like that, TV's washed. Versus they're like, you know, they they flipped it like they they basically kept came at each other with, you know, on money, on money shit. And so that's their whole thing. You know, I don't really know the details. I don't really care to look into this further because uh, I just already don't like the fact that two entities that I do enjoy, that I do like a lot, are beefing or just disagreeing, whatever. Right? I don't like that either. Yeah, she's leaving. She's, she's all dirty and she wants me to pet her. Um, but yeah, that's the whole thing with that. DJ Academics and these is a Mero. I might, uh, might do a little video or something like that. Maybe building on that, but that's what's going on. And uh, let me just touch on the fact that y'all music coming back or more music coming 20, 2017 is about to be over 2017 is about to be over there are literally wow there are literally 10 days left oh it's right it's just the 22nd wait a second yeah Monday is Christmas okay yeah earlier I said Friday December 21st Sorry, y'all. 22nd. Today's now the 22nd. It's late. It's, you know, after midnight and stuff. But, uh... There's 10 days left in 2017. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. That's it, y'all. So, um, I don't want this to be the last episode of 2017. But rest assured that I will not be, you know, quitting the freak show for a renegotiation of contract. I do this for free, y'all. So just be sure to leave some comments. Just be sure to talk about really anything that I talk about in this episode. Some of your favorite episode. All that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for... If I don't, you know, make make something in that time, I'm really going to try really hard to. But if I don't make something in that time, I just want to 
say that it's been a really nice year rocking with y'all, or a few months rocking with y'all. I know that I should have more than 32 episodes, but 32 is a really good number, so much love. I know those three things have nothing to do with each other, yeah. But be sure to follow Cyrex MC, C Y R E X M C, on YouTube, on Instagram, on SoundCloud, on Twitter, Facebook, on really a lot of things. You know, I'm gonna be making a lot more content in 2018, a lot more, a lot more. So look out for that. And I just wanna, just wanna thank you for rocking with me. Once again, this is the free show, episode 32. I'm your boy Cyrex. Have a good night.